What's up guys, it's Maris from Audio Judgment and today we are going to build a subwoofer. Now normally when you see a box this size you expect to see a single speaker. However, this one has four. And now the question I hear you asking. But isn't the box too small to accommodate so many speakers? Doesn't the box become unstable at high volumes? Well, not really. Here's the deal, we have two active speakers and two passive speakers. The active speakers are some Dayton Audio reference subwoofers, 8 inch in size, and Dayton Audio 10 inch passive radiators. But Marius, shouldn't the passive radiators be the same size as the active speakers? Nope, in fact I highly recommend that your passive radiator is larger than the active speaker. While passive radiators solve some problems normal bass reflex boxes have, it also comes with its own set of issues. One of which is reaching the excursion limit of the cone. Many times you reach it pretty easily and getting a larger passive radiator will solve this issue. So we got away with a small box by using passive radiators. What about bunching so many speakers together? Won't that make the box vibrate uncontrollably? Well, it's actually the other way around. This box is perfectly balanced. This is because you have two speakers on opposing panels. They move in the same direction and therefore cancel the vibration induced to the box. Same goes for the passive radiators. Even though they are out of sync with the active speakers, they are in sync with each other and that's what's important because they are on opposing panels. I'm going to demonstrate this with a glass of water, play some music through the subwoofer and watch how the glass of water doesn't go completely crazy. Now the subwoofer wasn't playing at full volume because it rattles everything around the house. However, you could see that the speaker had a respectable excursion and the water was basically still. For now, I'm going to show you how I built it and at the end I'm going to show you how to tune it to your liking. Since this is a passive radiator, tuning it is as simple as swapping some weights on the back of the radiator. Let's go!
Normally I wanted to tune this at 30 something hertz and I used two discs. However, most people don't like to tune it that low. As a result, I'm going to take all the discs off, which means this is the highest tuning frequency you can achieve since there is no way to reduce the moving mass. So basically we have 31 hertz versus 43 hertz. I don't know why you want higher than 43 hertz for a subwoofer, but that's the tuning frequency if you don't attach any discs. If you go with just one disc, you will be somewhere between 31 and 43 hertz. If we look at the frequency response, we get what we expect. Better low end response for two discs versus steeper roll off and increased output uh, a bit higher in frequency if you choose no discs at all. Both of them work perfectly fine. I'm guessing people will prefer the higher tune. So if you don't have much available space or if you want to impress with a small sub, this is an option to consider. Build difficulty is very low, but it's not a cheap subwoofer. Those passive radiators are not your run-of-the-mill Chinese membrane. You're basically buying four speakers and it adds up. Anyway, if you want to give it a try, I'll post the building plans on my website. If you like what I do, make sure to do the social media stuff. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Peace.